Not sure why it has to rain every single time I try and film in here, but such is life. Winter is approaching. Um, it's actually the start of November now. It's getting a little chilly. And most people would just be putting their cars away for winter. I'm actually getting ready to drive it 2,500 miles. So Simply Clean is coming up real, real soon. Uh, I think it is just over two weeks away now. Um, it's in Daytona, Florida. It's around about a 12 or so hour drive. It's probably gonna be about 14 hours because I'm probably gonna have to make a bunch of stops, but it's a long drive and I am driving the car there. Um, and before I do that, there's obviously some issues that needed to be addressed. I have driven the car a decent amount. I actually just drove the car to Cincinnati this weekend um, and it did great, but Main issue that I needed to take care of was the fact that my front bags, the spindles were rubbing on them. Um, and the best thing I could have done was get adjustable top hats, but nobody in the goddamn country is selling any right now. And I'm sure when you see this video, somebody's gonna post and be like, oh, this dude's selling them. Not helpful because that's been and gone. Um, so my plan B was to get different bags. Um, so I got slim double bellow bags to replace the regular size triple bellows in the front, which are huge, um, and the doubles are tiny. I will show you them in just a second. And before I do anything, let me just say I'm really skeptical about these new bags because I'm sure I'm gonna have clearance. I'm just worried as to whether it's even gonna lift the car like at all. These things have like barely any travel. Um, so yeah, let me show you the bags. Ignore the trunk full of stuff. Boom, right here, we have slim double bellows. These are from C2B, which is coilover the bags. Uh, they make these for all kinds of applications. I got them for my D2 racing coilovers. They make them for BCs, uh, basically any kind of coilover that you could probably imagine. I think they even have a drop down option for eBay coils. You know, they're, they're pretty good. Um, well, I mean, I can't say they're pretty good because I haven't put them on the car yet, but. So my skepticism with these is that just by looking at them, Obviously, they look like they're pretty small, but you guys probably can't tell. So let me give you a little bit of perspective. We'll give you better perspective once I actually pull the front struts off. Um, here's the new double bellow. Here is the old double bellow that goes in the rear of the car. So this was an old bag that I took off because it had like a little mark on it that was worrying me. It was probably fine, but I replaced it anyway. So I just have this laying around. But as you can see, the size difference is, it doesn't look too crazy. Um, hold on, let me take that out of the shadow. Um, these are skinnier and a little bit shorter than these, but um, the fronts, I have triple bellows. So imagine this with another one on top. They're a lot bigger. This is obviously like the max height or it maybe goes a little bit higher than that. I, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just a little bit worried. Now, you might be asking, why would you buy a bag that you know is way too small when you just buy like regular double bellows? Well, okay, regular double bellows, I'd probably have the same issue with rubbing. The reason that I wanted slim double bellows is because these bags have a smaller air chamber, which means they require less air to get to the pressures that you want, and therefore they ride stiffer. Um, and this was something that I was intending to do next year anyway, so switching out the front a little early, I don't have a problem with, um, and you know, we'll get to see how they actually perform. But yeah, that's the whole point of these, is that they're gonna ride a little bit stiffer than these regular bags, and I can actually show you the difference just with these bags alone. Watch this. See how easy that is to compress? And then watch this one. Without further ado, let's go ahead, pull the front struts off and begin taking the current bags off of that and getting these new ones on. Okay, 
so right here is the spot of which I've been rubbing. Um, it, it's not too, too bad, um, but you know it's gonna keep doing that and it definitely like, it feels pretty thin. So anyway, let's compare these. Okay, that is not as bad as I thought. Uh, I guess it's gonna mount like right there, so it's right at the bottom. You know what? I'm not super worried now. I mean, if this is the max lift, I imagine it probably goes up more than this, but if I lose out on two inches of lift, I will not be mad. I never raise my car up super high, ever. Um, so the top three inches of travel that I have are never used. Um, unless I'm like jacking the car up, which in future I can just drive the car up onto wood and then jack it up. Um, so this actually looks pretty promising. Let's, uh, let's pull this bag off and stick it on there and see what it looks like. Old bag, out. New bag, in. And it turns out that they have sent me the wrong bags. These do not match the thread on my struts. Fuck! It's cold. We're back. It's a week later and my replacement bags are here. Just a patch of ice right here in the door. Real awful. Fuck you. What the fuck? Please don't tell me the size of the door has changed because it got too fucking cold. That'll work. Before we do anything, talk about anything, I need to plug this motherfucking heater in. kind of nervous to show my face. I shaved. The last clip, obviously, I hadn't shaved. And this is gonna be really confusing because the video that comes out after this one, I will have a beard in the start of it, and it's like the same. Stuff's all over the place, but it was time. It's gone. I'm really insecure about my fucking chins now. Um, but here we are. We have the replacement bags. It's been a week. They're here, and they're different. They, let me show you. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but these are, they're still super slim, but I think they're like an inch taller. I, I immediately pulled them out of the box. And I was like, oh shit, these things are like way taller. Um, if I put them next to the double bellow, which you guys have obviously already seen, they're definitely now bigger than these doubles. So these may actually be better, but I still have no idea if they actually fit the struts. I literally just walked in here, as you saw. I just got home from work. These came in today, so it's time. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Please, please be the right one. Be the right one. It's looking promising. such a fucking relief. It, uh, it randomly snowed last night and it is the middle of November. Or actually, it's not even the middle of November. It's like near the start of November. I guess it's kind of the middle, but anyway, it's November and it snowed in southern Kentucky, which is not normal. <sighs> that makes me so happy. I will finally be able to get this car back on the ground. I'm just under a week until I drive this thing 14 hours, which is the longest it's been driven on this setup. So I was getting a little nervous, but I think we're good. Okay, I adjusted it down just a little bit, just enough so I could get it in there. And now everything is uh, together. It's not all bolted up super tight or whatever. It's just, just kind of in there for the time being because I want to 
jack it up and basically just check to make sure that this is not going to rub on this, which who knows? There's not a whole lot of space. Good news, guys. Are you ready? You see, right at the top right now. And as you can see, it clears. It's tight, but it clears. I was not expecting that to compress like that. But I guess the reason that these ride as well as they do and as stiff as they do is because these sidewalls always stay like completely intact, like they're they're flat and straight. And then it's just like the inner pieces and the top and the bottom that like compress together. Frankly, that is that's nuts. I may end up shortening this like a bunch more. Like I may bring it down like an inch because I want this to be able to ride as good as possible at a low ride height. So I don't need a ton of lift. If I bring this down, bring the minimum, the bring the minimum and maximum down enough to get it like in a sweet spot in the middle for like me to ride real low and uh, have the bags not be looking like this because I'm sure riding like this they're not gonna ride very good. Okay so before I go ahead and do the other side um, I shortened down the strut to kind of find like a good in-between spot and right now I feel like I have it I'm not sh so I have, I've jacked it up just a little bit because obviously the suspension is gonna sag and there's no way it'll be able to lift as high as the sag is um, so I left it up just a little bit and I think that this is probably going to be the maximum lift I'm able to get. Although I kind of hope it is because this is this is perfect right here. Because I, I literally, I mean, I never really drive my car this high. Um, so if this was the maximum amount of lift I could get out of this, that would be perfect. Because that's probably just enough to get my bumper over most stuff. Um, and then it'll basically keep my essentially spring rate from the bag better at my lowered ride height so if, if this is you know if this is lower and way closer to the lip there's going to be more travel in the bag and it's going to have more air in it which essentially means a stiffer spring rate although obviously it's not spring um, whereas if you have you know the bag compressed with less air in it it's going to be way softer um, it doesn't matter how much you tune the damping on your stock fucking struts. You'd have to revalve them to be way more aggressive to change anything else otherwise. Um, so, yeah, by adjusting the minimum and maximum, basically allowing for more air at a lower ride height, um, giving me a stiffer spring. So, that I'm hoping that that's like my maximum lift. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it up to whereabouts. I'm probably going to drive it most of the time, and then along with my low ride height, um, and just check to see how the bag looks. So this is how I would like to have my daily drive ride height at. This is exactly where I want it. Um, it looks really, really good. Um, and I basically just need to make sure that, that spring is gonna be stiff enough to stop this from compressing and also stop this from hitting here, which, you know, I need to shorten spindles. We already know this. I've mentioned this in many videos. I'm going to do it, but Ideally, I want to be able to drive the car on the highway like that. If I have to have it just a little bit higher than that, that's fine. Um, but let's take a look and see what the strut looks like. Okay, so it's not super, super crazy compressed, which gives me the impression that it's probably going to ride decently stiff, which is exactly what I want. Uh, we have clearance for fucking days. Okay, both the struts are off of the car. As you can see, we have the new versus the old. Like I said, I had triple bellows in the front, doubles in the rear, which we're keeping the doubles in the rear for right now. We may go to a slim, it depends how well these ride. As you can tell, I have lowered this side just a little bit, um, but this at the exact same height as this, this is taller. This, this bag provides more lift than this triple bellow, which amazes me. I had no idea it was gonna do that. Obviously the first ones that I was sent were, I think they were four or four and a half inch bags. I believe these are like five, five and a half, or six maybe even, I don't know. But these are definitely bigger than the ones that they sent me initially that didn't fit. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much a side by side. The other thing that I need to talk about is, you notice right here, the, uh, the 
air line comes off the bottom of this strut, so obviously my line to run for that. And then on this, it comes off at the top. Jam for the fitting in, but they sent me two different types of fitting. They have a compression one, which is the same as these, and then they have a push to connect. Push to connect is fucking amazing, so I may use that. It just depends how reliable it's gonna be. Um, so yeah, the issue that I'm gonna run into now is that the air line that I already have on the car is not long enough to run up to there. So I may be able to go down the entire underside of the car and kind of like get some slack out of the airline. Uh, but I don't particularly want to have to do that if I don't have to because it's nice to have some extra slack in it because obviously the suspension moves. Um, so what I may end up doing is I do have a couple days. It's Tuesday right now. Um, I may get onto bag riders, which I've spoken about many, many times, um, and see if I can order some fittings or some braided hose. That's definitely what I would recommend if you're doing an air suspension setup. It's it's 100% a good idea to have braided lines through the actual fender wells, and then once it's under the car and it's in a safe place where it can't rub or uh, kind of be broken, then go to a normal airline, but braided lines are definitely a good idea, so I may see if they're able to do something like that and order some fittings and stuff, um, and hopefully they can get it to me by Friday at the latest, and then have everything put back together for this weekend and on the ground and driving. Well guys, you can't hear the sound of the propane heater because it died. I don't know if it's out, but it just like switched off and then started smoking, so hopefully it's not like fucking blown up, but I guess I'm gonna have to come back and do this another night because it's way too cold. Um, I want to say it's like 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit right now. You can see. This garage has no insulation. It's cold. My toes are freezing. And that heater was doing just enough to keep me warm, even though I was still really cold. So, yeah, I guess I'll go get some more propane, and hopefully it's not broken, because otherwise I'd have to go buy another one. Um, but... Or it could just, like, warm up for, like, a couple of days. That would be fantastic. It just dropped off and got crazy cold all of a sudden, and it's making it really difficult to do anything, because I work all day, and then I come home, and this is the only time I have to work on this car. And I have to work all weekend, because I need to catch up for the time that I'm missing to go to Simply Clean next week, and there is stuff that needs to get done at work. So I'm stressing. I think I can get everything done. I still have a bunch of shit that I need to do, which you'll see in the video after this, the other stuff that I'm doing with this. <sighs> Stressing, but let's come back another day. I'll see you. What's going on, guys? We're back. It's another day. Back to doing the suspension on the front of the car. Um, I actually came in here the other night and finished it up for the most part. Um, did the other side got them lowered to where I wanted them, put them back on the car, got everything, um, all the lines let up and everything, blah, blah, we're good. And then I dropped it on the ground and I still had the rear of the car on jack stands and the front was on the ground. So I aired it all the way up and then I let it sit for like a day or two and it held air. So that's that was good. Um, but the height had dropped like probably half an inch. And I thought that was a little bit weird. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. Um, so I decided, yeah, let's like raise it up a little bit because if that's the maximum height that I have from it, I want to get a little bit more. Um, so raise the bag up a little bit on both sides. Uh, got it to where I thought was probably good. Um, I thought I had it pretty much where the old bags were. Put the back wheels back on and had the whole car on the ground. And then it turns out that it can't air up very high at all. Initially it aired up like decent, it wasn't too bad. I was like, okay, I can deal with that. Maybe raise it up a little bit, but it's drivable for right now. And then I raised it up and down a couple more times. And each time that I would raise it up to its highest point, it would be lower. And now it's not very high at all. Okay, so I made a preset so that I could drive the car to work today um, just because I really wanted to drive it and just make sure that these bags are all good. Um, and I have 150 PSI in the front. Let me show you how high that is. That's 
that's about it. So it goes a little bit higher. I can get like close to 170 PSI in these bags and it's not much higher than that. So that's not great. As you can imagine, it was way lower than that before. Um, but yeah, that's kind of annoying. Um, I wanted to get like just a little bit more lift out of that and I really don't want to be running 150 PSI at that height. Um, but the nice thing is, the bags do handle really well, they do ride pretty stiff, um, and it feels pretty good. So I guess I'm pretty much just going to try and raise them up a little bit more today and make sure that we're able to get, you know, a little bit more lift than that and uh, we should be good. But, so I think that the, uh, the thing with it being a different height each time I raised it up is basically just the bag settling, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, so this morning when I left, I checked the height and I measured it. And then when I, I drove to work, I drove home from work and checked it again and the height was the same. So I would assume now that the bag is actually settled, um, it may change every single time that you lift the car off the ground because it's stretch, like the sag is stretching the bag out and it's gonna settle differently each time. So if we just raise it up enough to account for that, then we should be okay. But I just thought that was super weird and I didn't know if that was part of the like settling in process of the bag initially. Um, not entirely sure, but we'll see. I counted the amount of threads that I have in a picture from the old bags and it is exactly, it's in exactly the same spot. I'm gonna try winding this up just a little bit more. We'll make sure it's even on both sides and then we'll drop it down and see where we're at. If I can just get it like an inch higher, then we're set. But um, yeah, I, I mean, it's a good thing that the replacement bags were these taller ones, because if I had the shorter ones that they sent me initially, I'd probably be fucked. There's no way this would lift up. The good thing with these is they're push to connect. So it's super easy to just disattach the line to it and like adjust whatever you need. And it stays at the top, which means that it doesn't ever move. So the compression of the suspension doesn't move the airline. So you just secure it in like a good spot and you're fucking good to go. It doesn't move. Right now, it appears as if we have a lot of lift, but don't let it fool you because it did this shit to me yesterday. Like I had this much lift and then once we had it up and down a couple times, it would not get back up to that. Air it out and then air it back up. We'll see what happens. And the front airs out really fucking quick too. We're gonna hit my upper preset which will bring the front to 150 and basically just see what happens. Okay. As of right now, looking pretty convincing. If that's 150, that's higher than it was, which is a good thing. Still not super high, but honestly, that's as high as I would need it. I really, I, I don't ever go any higher than that. I just really hope that it like settles and that is the height that it will stay at because then obviously I can have my drive height be lower. So for reference, we're going to measure it. It actually looks like it already dropped down a little bit. So not the best thing, but anyway, let's take a measurement in the, uh, the middle of the wheel. See where we're at with it. 2.75 inches. All right. So I understand that this video has been all over the place. Um, front bags are in. I have driven them here and there for a couple of days. This drive height right here, which is decently low, I can't, I can turn, but if I hit a bump when I turn it with fucking fenders up, is 130, that's 133 PSI. So 150 is like a little bit higher than that. 140 is like the sweet spot for like it looking good and still being able to turn and not like fuck anything up. And then it, They'll go up to like 170 to raise it really high if I have to, but they that's still not really high. It's like, I don't fucking know. It's like that maybe. It's it's not much, so if I need to jack the front of the car up, I have to pull up onto wood every single time. From me driving on them, I can tell you they do ride stiffer. Uh, right now, I have my dampening set to the stiffest setting, 
Uh, when I drive to Simply Clean in a couple days, I'm probably going to set it to the soft setting just so I can have a little bit more comfort. They're pretty aggressive, um, but that's what I wanted. And also, I have driven it at some like ignorantly low ride heights, and it does really, really well. Uh, it does obviously absorb the bumps. It's not going to be like a static car with a 50k spring. Don't expect that. Um, but it does, uh, it absorbs them, but absorbs it once and it doesn't have a whole lot of travel to it. So that's really, really good. Um, so if I ride at a really, really low ride height, I tend to just catch the, uh, the lips on the inside of the fenders when I hit a bump. And it's not really that big of a deal. So that is perfect. And I'm really excited to get down to Daytona and drive this thing around really low all weekend and hopefully not have any issues. But I wanted to have a test drive in this video um, but that's not going to happen because I'm running out of time. I'm working huge amounts of overtime right now. We're super busy at work and then I'm, I'm leaving for Simply Clean and I've just been non-stop working on this piece of shit. Um, so and also my daily blew up yesterday so I have to drive this to work every day now and that makes it a lot harder to work on it in the evenings especially when I have about two hours to get stuff done. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle, but tune in to the video where I drive this car 14 hours to simple clean, and I'll basically give a bunch more insight um, as to how the bags handle, and yeah, stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry, again, that I'm not very good at this. I get way too in over my head about, like, trying to get this done as opposed to filming, um, so getting it done is always going to come first over the videos. Sorry, guys, but... Um, I will try and fill you in where I can, but thank you guys for watching, subscribe, we'll see you soon.